Welcome back to World Studies. We're doing Roman numeral three, technology and culture. By the way, this is the topic of your essay for your upcoming test. So star this, highlight this, do what you need to do so you know that this is the topic for your essay. Hopefully you did the homework and took the quiz that was assigned in the last video. And let's get going. Technological advances seem to occur on a daily basis in the modern world. No sooner has a person purchased a computer or cell phone than a newer version becomes available on the market. Oh, one more thing. Uh, if, if you are wanting to study out this uh, topic for the essay more thoroughly, the pages that you can find are found on 376 to 378. Uh, on page 377, there is a purple box entitled The Internet. I want you to read that box to yourself. Once you have finished, please unpause the video and we will continue. Technology is beneficial for mankind because it simplifies the tasks that must be done from day to day. Instead of driving to a bookstore, browsing through stacks of books, buying a book, and driving home, a person can access a website and buy a book from the comfort of his own home. If he has an e-reader, the text of the book can be instantly delivered to his device, but such conveniences are only good if they are used for good purposes. Technology facilitates evil as well as good. A person can now access... Let me start over. Technology facilitates evil as well as good. A person can now access pornography in the privacy of his own home without being seen by others. Our hearts are bent to lust after evil things. Technology can make it easier to nourish those lusts. Christians need to think carefully about both the benefits and the dangers of various technologies as they consider using them. And that's what this Roman numeral is all about. So letter A, let's talk about the promises that technology and culture provide to us. The list of technological advances is long and growing longer by the day. The possibilities of technology seem to be endless. We will briefly examine four areas where technology has improved the quality of life. Number one, medical advances. If you were to quick do a thought and realize I'm so glad I live in the 21st century rather than in the Middle Ages, I think medicine has improved quite a bit since those time periods. Well, medical drugs, vaccinations, and laser surgeries, etc., etc., have done all this. New drugs have been developed to help overcome several diseases. Vaccinations are used to cure or prevent diseases such as polio or smallpox. Laser surgeries and other procedures are used to destroy tumors or repair injured organs through tiny incisions. These procedures protect the patient from many surgery-related infections and enable more rapid recovery. Number two, another promise is that it's, it provides time-saving devices. Household appliances, automobiles, etc., etc. Life would be very difficult if there were no washing machines, dishwashers, and vacuum cleaners. Automobiles make it possible for people to travel great distances in less time. These time-saving devices have provided people with more leisure time. Some would argue that they have also improved our quality of life. Number three. Another promise of technology is it provides communication advances. Instant communication devices like the phone, email, social networking sites, etc., etc. People are able to communicate almost instantly because of these advances. Businesses can communicate around the world. Missionaries can communicate with their supporting churches in real time and rapidly share their needs, prayer requests, and answer and answers to prayer. Families also find it easy and inexpensive to converse over long distances. A fourth and final promise that technology gives is that it's provided plenty of information, an information explosion. We can view books, newspapers, etc. from the internet. No longer do you have to go to a library and search for a book you are researching. More than enough information can be found 
on your computer. But for every positive in technology, there can also be negatives involved. Letter B, peril. While technology holds great promise, it truly, truly does. It also generates concerns that Christians should address. Number one, medical advances. Wait, I thought you said that was a promise. Yes, but medicine has also had its own perils as it's advanced too. Medical advances have obscured our sense of our own mortality. It affects doctor-patient relationship, and it can be used for sinful purposes, etc. People living in 1900 were more aware of death and were tempered by its reality. Also, a doctor may rely too much on technology than on the patient's description of symptoms. Medical technology is used for sinful purposes such as abortion and embryonic stem cell research. Most of you guys know what abortions are, but do you know what stem cell research is? Well, turn in your books to page 378. On page 378, there's a purple box entitled Stem Cell Research. Please read that box to yourself. Once you have finished, please unpause the video and we'll continue. Neil Postman commented on the rise of technology. We had learned how to invent things, and the question of why we invent things receded in importance. The idea that if something could be done, it should be done, was born in the 19th century. The truth of Postman's observation is borne out in the debate over stem cell research. Opponents of embryonic stem cell research are often dismissed as standing in the way of progress. Moral concerns, especially those deemed religious in nature, are deemed irrelevant in the face of progress. The Christian, on the other hand, must insist that the question of why we invent things maintain its importance. We must be defenders of the idea that not everything can be done, should be done. By the way, stem cell research will be the topic of your homework assignment that I'll mention at the end of class. Number two, time-saving devices. We worry talked about the promises of time-saving devices. Now let's talk about its perils. Time-saving devices waste our time and not thinking about important matters. We often fill our leisure time with things that add little or nothing to our lives. One of the keys to a proper use of technology is to control the technology rather than allowing technology to control the user. Number three, communication advances. Uh, communication now interrupts productive work, deliberation, thoughtfulness, etc., etc. Excessive communication results in less thoughtful, less reflective, and less substantive communication. And lastly, number four, information explosion. The fact of the matter is, difficulty, there is difficulty in identifying what is important or not. The accuracy or inaccuracy of the information, the easy access to harmful and sinful materials, etc., etc. Mass communication, most notably TV, tries to grab the largest market and thus reduces the quality of public discourse. Since careful evaluation of important issues does not sell, public discourse often degenerates into sound bites and sensational reporting. Uh, we could also talk about the fact of the harmfulness and sinfulness of things that you can find either on TV, on the internet, also is a very real issue. For your homework, page 163 and 164 in your activities book, it's a reading section over stem cell research. So please read the info and then answer the six questions on the back. Hope you all have a good rest of the day. Be good, do good. Bye.